Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Selma, uh, and this is my colleague, uh, Lova. I'm coming from Sarajevo, Bosnia, and today I will present you uh, the role of QGIS documentation writer. So the board and community in some moment uh, noticed the uh, backlog in the documentation, so there was a decision to do these experimental uh, roles to see how, how open source community can uh, act with uh, full-time uh, roles. So first, let's present um, QGIS documentation writer role. Uh, first, let's define what documentation means in the context of uh, QGIS. Uh, it means that we have lots of uh, manuals uh, and guidelines and uh, 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 developer cookbooks. Uh, so the, uh, the, uh, the most important parts of the documentation that I've been working on are the uh, user manual and the training manual. Uh, GitHub serves as a um, main platform for the documentation uh, in the QGIS project. Uh, and we usually are working on, uh, testing, uh, uh, on testing, doc testing documentation, but we also uh, sometimes do a backlog to, to uh, older versions. Uh, uh, I want to mention the visual changelog, uh, changelog site here because it's very helpful, helpful, helpful for documentation writers and anyone who wants to uh, try to contribute to documentation. So the significance of maintaining QGIS documentation, uh, those numbers that you can see are, uh, that this is a screenshot from the last month. Uh, uh, so lots of people uh, open the QGIS daily. Uh, so that's the um, main uh, reason, reason, reason why we need a very well structured documentation. So uh, our, our site uh, serves as a centralized knowledge base uh, where uh, all the developers, professionals and also beginners can find uh, information about QGIS and uh, they can also find some uh, resources for and uh, sample data. Of course, uh, it facilitates learning and adoption. Uh, we try to promote uh, learning uh, through the QGIS documentation and also uh, adopt that documentation to, to everyone. Uh, it uh, also uh, provides consistency and quality control uh, because uh, we, when write uh, documentation, we need to uh, keep, consistent, uh, uh, keep consistency through the, all the manuals and uh, all the sections and chapters into the documentation. And also when the writer writes documentation, he needs to test uh, new features, new algorithms and options, so that also serves as a quality control. And uh, if we have very well and organized uh, documentation, we, can, we could uh, uh, encourage a uh, community to uh, contribute uh, more to the whole project. Uh, this role also comes with some goals. Um, first of them is to reduce number of open uh, issues, first of all the older issues. Uh, then we uh, want to uh, improve communications between uh, writers and developers because that's uh, also very important for, uh, for uh, writers. Uh, and we want to increase community engagement in the documentation. That means that we, uh, uh, we try to uh, encourage uh, users to uh, report issues, to uh, um, like do some testing on the documentation and to tell us what, what needs to be uh, uh, what needs to be changed and updated and things. Uh, and of course, uh, we try to document uh, features for the next release. As you all know, the QGIS have uh, four releases in one year, so keep uh, keep uh, up to date with all of that is uh, one of the primary goals. Uh, so now let me introduce you my uh, daily workflow and my tasks because this is an experimental role and I believe uh, you want to know what, what that looks like. So first I do uh, issue triage where I um, try to uh, uh, triage the, and uh, uh, choose priority for every uh, issue. Uh, then I create my uh, time uh, planning and time management to do my stand up and uh, uh, those uh, project management things. Uh, after that, uh, I went to uh, pull request reviews. That means that I can write some reviews on some other open pull request or someone will uh, review my pull request. Uh, here I want to, uh, want to mention uh, Harry So. You may know him uh, as a DLIG on the GitHub. He's like the main guy for the documentation and most of the uh, reviews on my pull request are done by him. 
so he's like very helpful for everyone who starts with the documentation. Uh, after that, I'm trying to find accurate spatial data for testing. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit hard because uh, I, I usually uh, do with uh, familiar formats and uh, familiar stuff, but sometimes I need to find uh, the data formats that I really don't know anything about and that can be a little bit time consuming. After that, I'm uh, uh, testing new features, uh, uh, new features uh, and uh, check their functionality through the uh, different uh, QGIS version. I always have like four versions on my, uh, on my PC. Uh, there is a nightly version, the newest version, and a, a LTR version, and some, some one or two uh, versions in between. Uh, after that, I create changes, uh, create pull request, wait for uh, review, uh, add suggestions, and after uh, everything is fixed and the pull request is merged, we can consider it as, as done. Uh, technology is actually used for documentation. As I already said, GitHub is the main platform for our work. We use also, of course, uh, uh, Git as version control. Uh, 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 documentation is built by Sphinx, uh, uh, so that means that uh, uh, every uh, document is written in the restructured text, and then we use Sphinx and read the docs to publish those, uh, those uh, changes. And of course, QGIS for testing uh, everything. Uh, so here I want to showcase you uh, uh, something that I've been working on. Uh, so this is a completely new chapter in the documentation. Uh, it was a little bit challenging for me, uh, but I had luck to meet uh, one of the developers in person and he explains me a lot and show me some examples. So uh, we managed to create a new, new chapter. Anyway, I want to say that if you create a whole new chapter in documentation, there is a lot of things that you need to pay attention, pay attention on. For example, for this uh, chapter, we changed like 17 files. So we have lots of substitutions and lots of uh, uh, rules that you can find on the documentation guidelines uh, to see how, how the uh, completely uh, new chapter uh, can be created. Uh, there was a lot of uh, comments and suggestions. Uh, ticket discussions was, was very, very big, but at the end we managed to create a whole new uh, chapter. Uh, and of course, there are some challenges in this role um, that we are, you can notice that challenges and goals are something similar, uh, but uh, uh, keeping up, up with rapid development definitely is the biggest challenge because uh, you usually have a bigger number of developers than uh, documentation writers. So keep, uh, keep that in line can be very challenging and it is, uh, it is ongoing process. Uh, of course, we need to balance technical accuracy with accessibility. That means we need to provide a, a source of truth. We need to uh, be completely uh, technical accurate. But that also means that we need to be accessible for everyone, even the beginners, uh, someone who just entered to, to GI's world, and uh, and for people who are uh, people who are already professionals and developers and things. Uh, of course, we need to uh, uh, keep the consistency across different sections. Uh, as I already mentioned, we have a lot of uh, manuals and a lot of sections and chapters inside those manuals. We need to keep the same tone, same style, and same vi visual identity of all sections. Uh, and that, of course, uh, is a challenge it, as itself. Uh, and the last one is engaging the community. Um, I believe, personally, if we, were, if we have a very well-organized uh, documentation and a system we, uh, for uh, writing documentation, we can encourage uh, lots of users and uh, people in community to uh, to uh, uh, help us with that documentation, to write uh, reviews, or to uh, uh, or to open an issue, uh, or any any kind of uh, uh, any kind of engage engagement uh, by the community is uh, uh, welcome for us. So uh, now my colleague Lova will take over. Thank you, Selma. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Lova. I'm from Madagascar. And today I'm going to walk you through the role of uh, QGIS full stack web developer. Uh, before starting, I want to uh, thank uh, first the, the QGIS for funding us for these two roles. And I want to also thank uh, Tim Sutton, as you might know him as uh, Tim Linux on uh, GitHub, for his uh, tutoring and monitoring me through all my work. And I want to also thank uh, Cartoza, uh, the company where I work. 
So my role as a um, QJS full stack developer is um, to manage both front end and the back end for each uh, QJS website. But uh, I'm also managing the um, infrastructure, uh, which uh, involves uh, DevOps and uh, system administration. Um, now, let's look at the objectives of maintaining the QJS uh, web presence. Um, the QJS websites are the faces of the project. So they are not only places to showcase resources, but key hubs for visibility and uh, accessibility. Um, they also help uh, build credibility with um, a responsive and well-maintained website. Uh, users feel confident about the, the project professionalism. It also brings community engagement by attracting new contributors and, um, and ensuring the project uh, sustainability. So those are the list of uh, the website um, that I'm currently maintaining on. First of them is the, the QGIS main website where we ca you, you can find all the information about the, the QGIS project, but uh, you, where you can download uh, QGIS desktop uh, itself. So I wanted to mention that uh, the work that I've done on the QGIS new branded website was mainly done by contributor and over contributor. But my role in this website is to maintain and uh, fix issues. Uh, I'm also maintaining the plugins website. Uh, when you open QGIS and um, go to the uh, plugins manager to download uh, new plugins, um, those plugins come from the, this website. So there is also the field website when you open QGIS and on the homepage you can see the news um, the, the, those news come from uh, the field website. Um, QGIS com, uh, comes also with uh, uh, metrics where you can find at um, analytics.qgis.org and um, it uh, shows all the statistics and uh, metrics about the QGIS usage. Um, there is also a metrics for the plugins where you can see um, all the statistics about the plugin, each uh, plugin download. And from time to time, it happens to me that I work on the changelog website. Uh, the changelog website is the visual changelog for, uh, for, um, for the software releases. And finally, um, Matumo is um, currently uh, uh, also a work from Contour. But uh, it should be coming soon, as uh, it is currently under uh, progress. But uh, my demo where we can see all the analytics of, uh, of each website mentioned earlier. So uh, let's see my year plan and the goal uh, for this role. Um, my first uh, goal is to ensure that uh, each online resource, each server, has a proper backup uh, strategy. And uh, the second goal is to uh, standardize uh, the deployment process for each uh, website, and uh, it comes along with a clear documentation. Um, the third uh, goal is to uh, implement an automatic monitoring tool for, um, for each uh, server and each website, so system reliability and monitoring. Um, the fourth goal is to work on, the, on all the open issues on each repository and try to reduce them as uh, many as possible. The, uh, the, fourth, uh, the fifth uh, goal uh, is to standardize the branding across uh, all websites. Um, now, to achieve this, this goal, um, let's look at my daily workflow and tasks. Um, the, those the first two points, I'm not going to talk about them as uh, they are the same as Selma's, but the third task that I do daily is to monitor each, uh, each server and website if uh, they are working perfectly and uh, as uh, expected. So it comes along with uh, backup, so I fetch the backup from uh, each uh, server to my local machine. So if a code is ready for deployment, I, do, uh, I deploy them. 
and only after those uh, tasks that I do the actual uh, development where I fix bugs or develop new features. And to close the day, I write some documentation about the code that I made or about the system administration or also about troubleshooting. Now, let's look at the work that um, we've done or, the, or that are currently in progress. So the first important one is uh, to, I think it's to uh, make routine from the old infrastructure to the new one. So it involved uh, setting up new server, migrating all the websites to the new infrastructure, setting up more firewalls for more security, and also uh, setting up uh, a proper backup. So this, uh, this is how the monitoring tool looks like. Uh, you, where you can see uh, all the state of each services and uh, each server, and uh, you can see also the history of uh, of the state of, uh, of of them. And uh, yeah, as I said earlier, uh, the, the deployment uh, process and my system administration come with uh, documentation. So uh, this uh, how the documentation. Uh, website looks like. Uh, you can see all the information, all the instructions about uh, setting up, uh, from setting up the new server to deployment and uh, to troubleshooting. The goal of the documentation is to reduce the downtime as much, as, uh, as less as possible. So um, this is uh, the example of, uh, of uh, one of the goals that is to uh, to align, align the brand uh, through all the website. So for the feed, uh, it's, uh, it looked like this before. There are no proper uh, user interface. And now uh, we have branded the feed uh, to align it with the, the new website. Now let's look at the tools that I use uh, for this role. For the front end, um, the QGIS uh, main website, is mainly based on Hugo and uh, Pulma CSS. And the other related websites are mainly based on Django template. So obviously I use HTML, JavaScript, CSS, but also Bootstrap. For the backend, uh, Django and Django REST framework were the APIs. Um, Docker plays a crucial role in um, both, uh, both development environment, but also in uh, in the deployment environment. So all our codes are hosted on GitHub, and yes, we are using Git versioning. Um, and all our servers are hosted on Hetzner Cloud, and you, uh, we are using Nagios for the monitoring tool. For our sync, I'm using it to fetch um, the backup from uh, each server to my local machine. Uh, yes, being a full stack web developer is not without the challenges, so um, I've highlighted uh, some of them. Uh, the biggest one is, uh, yes, it's to maintain and monitor each website and each uh, server to ensure that uh, they are uh, working perfectly, there is no downtime, and, uh, and, uh, and yes. Uh, the, the second uh, challenge that I uh, was facing is uh, to upgrade the deprecated stack. An example of them is uh, upgrading the, the plugin website from Django 2 and PostgreSQL 9 to Django 4 and PostgreSQL 16. And it involved ma managing the data to, through that migra migration and also managing the code and the dependencies. And yeah, the third one is related to this. So migrating uh, each of the website to an infrastructure, and it is currently under under progress. And uh, yeah, the final one is uh, is about the community interaction. Whenever it comes to to getting feedback from the community, as we know that uh, most of the contributors are volunteer, but also when it comes to prioritize uh, the issues that we got from the community. Uh, whenever the issue should be fixed or not, and uh, what issue is uh, urgent. 
<clears throat> now let's look at the broader impact that uh, a well-maintained web uh, platform, web platform, sorry, and uh, documentation has on the QGIS community. First, uh, user engagement uh, increase when uh, each website is uh, is uh, well maintained and easy to navigate. Uh, of course, second one is community interaction, because uh, as I saw on my personal uh, uh, example, when you have a good uh, interaction inside the community, everything go, goes uh, faster and better. Uh, so I believe those two uh, roles could uh, uh, benefit to that uh, community interaction. Uh, and of course, a project grow. Uh, if we have need for two full-time roles, that means a project uh, uh, is growing and it will grow uh, in the future. And we hope that our two uh, roles could, uh, will be a great benefit for, for the QGIS uh, project. So that's all from us. If you have any uh, questions, you can ask us, or if you want to um, talk uh, uh, later, you can, you can uh, approach to us. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hello, thanks for the talk. Uh, first, as a user and a teacher for QGIS, I must say that the QGIS documentation has really improved in recent times, and I find that it's more complete and better. So thank you for doing the work. It's really appreciated. Uh, I had a question. One of the, I think one of the challenges would be to, as the QGIS version changes, to update all the screenshots and uh, stuff. Have you explored any automation where you could automate that with every new release? Uh, uh, I'm curious to know about that. Okay, so uh, automa automation in screenshots, yeah. Uh, right now we have screenshots from Windows, from uh, iOS, from uh, Linux and, and things like that. And uh, I'm aware that in some sections uh, we have uh, different uh, operating systems for, for the screenshots. Uh, I didn't uh, do anything on the automa automation of that, but yes, it's a good idea and uh, it, it could bring a lot, lots of uh, benefits. It could be uh, faster, it could be uh, much better if we somehow optimize that. Thank you.